Hi, I'm J. Todd Tucker, FLW Tour Pro. We're going to talk to you today about some of my couple of my favorite baits. Uh, that's the frog, and uh, there are a couple of different ways I like to fish. A couple of different types I like to fish, and what kind of setup that uh, that I fish it on. So this is one of the frogs I actually have rigged up right now. This is a popping frog. Um, this frog actually imitates a bluegill. This time of year when the bluegill are spawning, this is the color. The black frog with the black skirt. It's got a red mouth on it. And I throw it across the top of the bluegill beds and get uh, one or two of those bass that are searching for those injured bluegill. They're just done through, just through spawning. Uh, they'll go and that's what they eat in the mornings. Also, I always had different variety of colors just to imitate the, the forage that, that they're feeding on. This is a shad type frog, as you can see, is for clear water. Um, it does not have the popping uh, mouth. This, this bait will walk back and forth a little bit easier. And, it, and anytime you see a log or any kind of cover in the water, you can make this bait just dance back and forth where it stays in the strike zone longer. and just kind of irritates the fish. Here's a frog that I use this color when you, in the June and July period. Uh, it's just a little brighter. I fish this frog on Lake Seminole quite a bit. This is when the bluegill are kind of off the beds and uh, this seems to get their attention a little bit better. But the big deal is just the variety. Here's some new frogs they have with the uh, that you can swim. Um, that actually does pretty good too at some times. But then, if you're in a situation where you're around a lot of bullfrogs, uh, really big frogs, Spro makes another frog that's a, just a giant frog and it's just got the profile of a bigger frog and it might get you a bigger bite or two by the end of the day. So check out all the frogs that you can. Every one of them imitate uh, either a bluegill, a frog, or a shad, or something that they're feeding on. But it's just a great way to uh, spend your day fishing because it's just probably the funnest fishing you could possibly do. When you take the frog out of the package, most of the time the skirting material is real long. You want to cut that off. And I usually use the length of the frog to measure how much I cut off. And what that does, that enables the frog to walk better. It has less drag on the back of it. So it gives the front end more action. And it's called walking the dog and it keeps the bait in the strike zone longer. With the popping frog, it makes a little bit more noise than the non-popping frog. The, the popping frog, when it, it, it will walk back and forth, but it carries a little bit of water with it. It moves more water. So it makes a little bit more noise than your gliding frog. Your gliding frog is just to be a quiet, quieter presentation. But this one will walk back and forth and it'll carry a little bit of water to, with it as well and maybe get a strike from dirtier water situations, whereas a glide type uh, frog, you want to use it in clearer water situations. So if you got a little color in the water, go with a proper frog, and they're gonna be able to key in on that frog a little bit easier. So when you're throwing a frog, it's really important that you use the right setup. You got two different things, three different things you need to worry about. The speed of your reel, I'll throw it on 713, duck it reel. This is 65 pound braid, I don't use anything lighter than 65, sometimes I'll use 80. And the reason for that is when you're, you're trying to place the frog where you want it in that cover, you've got to have a rod that's stiff enough to get the fish out, but you also have to have a tip on the end of that rod that's forgiving enough so you can let you pre pre present the bait where it needs to go. Too stiff of a rod is hard to, to cast. Uh, too light of a rod is hard to get the hook set on the fish. So, it's real important that you use heavy braid that gives you more power in the hook set. Uh, a heavy action rod, seven foot is what I use, and uh, skip it in there. And that way it's easier to work with a shorter rod. So when you want to, when you're popping this frog, you do light strokes. And then wait on the frog to turn before you pull it again and it'll walk back and forth. It's important you tie a really good knot with your uh, braid because it has a tendency of coming loose. I tie a, a uh, improved San Diego knot. I actually double my braid, and then I bring it up to this finger, and I wrap it three times. Now what's really important after you wrap it three times is to run your tag in back through the loop in front of the eye of your frog, and then you run your tag back through the loop that you made first. Now if you see this, 
how it cinches down perfectly. That is a good knot for braid that will not slip. And then you have three tag lines that you cut off. The other frog I like to use is this uh, kind of a crystal shad. Um, I actually cut one leg shorter than the other. This is more of a gliding frog. It's a quieter presentation. Uh, you basically work it the same way, but when, you get, when you're around clearer water, this is a little bit more effective. And it walks back and forth really good whenever you cut one of the legs shorter than the other. This particular frog has a rattle inside of it. You can hear it. So it does make a little bit of noise as you're walking it back and forth. It also works as a weight transfer so that the weight, when you cast it, it goes to the back of the frog. And it really lets you put it where you want it. When you put the frog beside the bush or the, under the tree, you want to keep that frog in there as long as possible so it's really important that you get it moving back and forth so it doesn't come towards the boat fast you want to make it work back and forth and, and stay in that strike zone as long as possible it's really really important when fishing a frog most of the time when i use <clears throat> a crystal shad type frog which is a clearer uh, uh, more translucent color it's only usually only in clear water situations and and uh and you run into that a lot of times, especially if you're fishing in up under boat docks, underneath trees, and it's real shallow and really clear, then uh, that, that more translucent co color is, is uh, a little more effective than a darker color. So usually during the bluegill spawn, which is in the late spring, early summer, through the summertime, I'll go with a black frog. And then later in the fall, it's still warm, it's still hot. The bass start feeding on shad a little bit more. I'll go with the uh, like a crystal shad color and they're usually the water's a lot clearer like in October and September and uh, you'll need to go with a clear frog versus the black frog. It's, it'll help you catch more fish in the long run. I hope a little bit of this, what I've shared with you helps you uh, with your frog fishing. Um, this is my, like I, I think this is the funnest thing in the world to do. You get such a reaction out of a bass. You catch really big fish. You can throw it up in the cover and get it out of there as weedless as it can be. And it's an enjoyable way of fishing all day long. I'm Jay Todd Tucker. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you get something out of it. And we'll see you soon.